Removing paint from a facade is a complex process. The reason we remove paint from a building facade can range from aesthetic design or maintenance requirements. The big issues surrounding paint removal from building facades is the lack of general understanding relating to the facade's history. The levels and types of paint are generally unknown, along with the quantities and general condition of the substrate behind. Over time, new layers of paint are applied, and this slowly starts to suffocate the facade, weakening the masonry that sits behind it. It often becomes soft, crumbles, fails and ultimately falls. Masonry falling from the facade onto the surface is often what prompts action to be taken, but this is often too late. I'd also suggest that a budget is initially allocated for repairs and repointing once the paint has been removed, as this is highly likely that further works will be required. Old buildings have historically been coated with some form of lead-based paint. In fact, buildings painted more than 40 years ago will often contain some form of lead. Consideration should be given to the environmental waste requirements and the appropriate removal and waste management methods must be employed. A specialist paint testing kit can be bought from decorating suppliers that enables the testing of the paint before the removal and helps establish the levels of lead within it. This helps build a deeper understanding of how the project should be managed and delivered. The key to a successful paint removal project is to undertake pre-project testing, which will allow you or the architect or the conservation officer to build a true and real understanding of the methods, dwell times, pressures, temperatures, products, flow rates to help soften, break down and remove the paint with minimal damage to the substrate. From a personal perspective, I'd try and stay clear of any dry air cleaning, i.e. sandblasting, as they strip, rip away and remove the patina of the masonry, leaving it exposed and vulnerable to increased rates of weathering, uh, decay and failure. Blasting may initially appear to be an attractive option as it's often much cheaper to remove paint, but it's more likely to create significant levels of damage on the facade, which will lead to much higher costs in the long term with repairs. I'd always ask for a demonstration from your service provider to enable you to see how various methods can work and the impact that each method has on the substrate. First we like to understand why you want to remove the paint and build a deeper understanding of how you want your building to look. If we feel for any reason that the paint removal isn't feasible, we'd explain why and then suggest alternative options for you to consider. First we start with a visual inspection, looking at the weaknesses, spawning of masonry or failure and identify the most suitable location for testing and then review this with the client, architect or conservation officer for approval. Methods of removal are then discussed, risks identified and the project adjusted to help minimise the risk and damage within the removal testing process. We will always test three to six different paint removal methods using different softeners, poultice type products to sensitively soften and break down any coatings. This will often be followed by steam where we use very low pressure with heat of 150 degrees to break down and remove the paint from the substrate. We then repeat the process making small adjustments in the heat, flow rates and dwell times to safely remove any remaining paint and at each stage we inspect the condition of the substrate, again adjusting methods where we feel required. As a rule our preferred method for external paint removal would be steam and softeners in multiple phases possibly with varying light agitation to help remove and soften the paint. If you wish to leave your masonry exposed and require a high quality finish, then you may need a further wet abrasive method which uses a very very fine aggregate such as calcium carbonate and a swirling motion to gently break down any of the remaining paint particles while protecting the substrate. This can be highly effective but using the least abrasive aggregate is the key to maintaining the integrity of the substrate. Please bear in mind that this type of method, if used, should only be used by an experienced operative and that your exposed brick could be damaged by overcleaning. The process of using a wet aggregate is quite messy. A slurry will be created from the cleaning process and it should always be fully rinsed down at each stage as this could lead to further staining on the substrate. If you are repainting, it's not really necessary to remove every speck of paint from the facade as this will lead to often overcleaning. Always ensure you pick a new high quality coating system that allows the substrate to breathe if you are repainting. For further information on our paint removal services, on-site testing or if you require a test trial, simply speak to one of our specialist team today who can provide further information. <laughs>